After a tour of China's rivals, the new U.S. Secretary of State concluding an Asia trip with a first face-to-face -face meeting with top envoys from Beijing. The sit-down happening on the way home in Anchorage, Alaska. Uh, there it will be the first time uh, that uh, there will be a meeting between Anthony Blinken's and top uh, uh, top representatives of uh, Xi Jinping since that initial phone call uh, between the U.S. president and his Chinese counterpart last month. Washington says it will pull no punches. Beijing says it doesn't have high expectations, both sides setting the tone for their bilateral talks. Touring China's neighbors this week, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken criticized Beijing's human rights record, while at the same time urging it to do more for regional security. We are clear-eyed uh, about Beijing's consistent failure to uphold its commitments, and we spoke about how Beijing's aggressive and authoritarian behavior are challenging the stability, security and prosperity of the Indo-Pacific region. China's ambassador to the United States made Beijing's position clear. Some people may think that having conversations with other countries before meeting with China may help to put pressure on China. I don't think it's necessary or useful. We will not make compromises or concessions on these issues in order to create a good atmosphere. The meetings in Alaska on Thursday and Friday were with the first senior-level discussions between the two rivals since President Joe Biden took office. Blinken and National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan will meet China's top diplomat Yang Jiechi and State Councillor Wang Yi. Both sides are eager to patch up some of the damage left by the Trump administration following a protracted trade war, mutual visa restrictions and technology bans. But the Biden administration has made it clear it will take a tough stance when it comes to human rights. On the eve of Alaska talks, it imposed fresh sanctions on two dozen Chinese officials for undermining democratic freedoms in Hong Kong. For more on this story, we're joined for our international affairs desk by France 24's uh, Douglas Herbert and uh, by uh, uh, China watcher André Lezecuc Pietri, who is president of the Joint European Disruptive Initiative, which brings together uh, civil society groups and businesses. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. Um, let's begin with uh, what's at stake in this uh, first trip. Uh, Andre, there's always this um, uh, misunderstanding, right, between uh, the, the when it comes to protocol and what the trip actually means. I read somewhere that for the Chinese, the trip is an end unto itself. No, absolutely. Very often, uh, uh discussions with 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 high level chinese delegation is all about uh, the the initial photo op uh, meaning that uh, china is not isolated is talking is so so the discussion is uh, an end in itself um, while often i would say more western uh, parties will be much more transactional and the ultimate uh, transactional uh, entity was the Trump administration. Here we see that Biden is, is probably taken, the Biden administration is taking a, a slightly different stance. They definitely are taking a slightly different stance. Douglas Herbert with, on the eve of uh, the uh, the meeting, uh, you could say Biden sending his calling card to Beijing with the sanctions slapped on those 24 uh, top officials in, yeah. uh, in, in China. Exactly. And why did they slap those sanctions? Uh, on the Hong Kong issue for essentially accusing China of shredding uh, Hong Kong's autonomy. Uh, so that's a clear shot across the bow right there. But, um, you know, just building on, on this meeting itself, just to, to underscore the contrast uh, between the sort of the takes that each side is coming into this meeting with, uh, the White House doesn't even say that... You, this this meeting's meant to even establish, uh, be sort of a prelude to regular contacts. It's a one-off. That's how they see it. They see it's a one-off to lay out sort of the strategic approach that Biden's going to take. The irony being, Francois, the great irony, Joe Biden under Barack Obama was the sort of point man for the engaging with investing in China policy. Back then, there was sort of, you could call it an illusion that China would have a benign, peaceful rise, that economic prosperity, technological development would help it become more plural 
pluralistic. And, and Xi Jinping world-based. was somebody who would who was have a, would would be in favor. Would of all be that stuff. would be in favor of all of that stuff. But now Biden, the same man who worked under Obama as that point man, finds himself in a very different position, sort of as at the head now of uh, uh, of an administration that has seen a paradigm shift. You could say the scales have, in a sense, fallen from their eyes when it comes to China. They know they have to engage with it because it's just too big a power not to engage. But at the same time, they are going to call China out. And that's part of, can you do it? Can you, I said this last night with Putin, a different issue, can you walk, uh, chew gum and walk at the same time, as Biden puts it? That's the big test here. And he's sent an even bigger message, uh, Andre Lizakir-Pietri, by putting uh, two people in charge of the China dossier who are, in effect, hawks. Uh, It's a 180-degree turn from, uh, as Doug mentioned, uh, the the vice president, Joe Biden, of uh, uh, more than four years ago. Yeah, no, it's 180 degree, but it's also four years as an eternity in the current, uh, you know, technological and acceleration we are we are witnessing. And obviously, the pandemic was was an incredible acceleration of of history. Uh, what is interesting is this change of strategy uh, of the U.S. I would say suddenly a strategy because basically uh, Donald Trump strategy was all about you know punching in the face, which. In no no time in history, this has been very um, efficient. Now, probably the U.S. are getting much more strategic. They are talking about containment. They are building um, they are building uh, alliances. There was this this famous meeting of, of the Quad uh, just a, a couple of days ago. Uh, we see much more engagement on on cyber diplomacy. So so it's a little bit of tit for tat for the for the vaccine or the mask diplomacy that China deployed because nobody else was able to to take the ground in a, in a, in a couple uh, last months. So I think we really entered a new Cold War. There's no other word for that. Uh, the, the, the words are the same. The summits are the same. It's pretty strange. You know, we used to have the Soviets and the, the U.S. meeting in, in uh, Reykjavik or in Finland. It was always these cold places it was symbolic for, of Cold War, and I cannot help making the parallel with, with Anchorage, which is a bit a strange place <laughs> to me. All right. All right. It's, it's, and there's also what the Chinese are thinking and what they're projecting when it comes to the new U.S. administration. Back in January, a week after the storming of the U.S. Capitol and a week before uh, the, the, the new president was sworn in, a top Chinese official in charge of state security was quoted as saying, the rise of China is a major variable in the world today. The rise of the East and decline of the West has become a trend. Hmm. Changes of the international landscape are in our favor. Is that really what people think in Beijing, Andre? Well, I don't know which people are you are you alluding to. Uh, the top leadership, clearly, and, and 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 what is really striking is that until really a couple of years ago, even at the beginning of Xi Jinping's reign, because there is no other word for 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 this, um, China was still famous for maybe not delivering, but at least. You know, there was the language. And you still see that in the interactions, for example, with the Europeans. There is this, you know, a lot of speeches, very relatively empty uh, press releases. Um, But here, the hard words we could hear from the Chinese ambassador, from the person you quoted. I mean, we have a very assertive China, totally different than the China of Deng Xiaoping, which used to be about you know rise quietly but um, uh, work uh, work under the under the ground uh, some people say even in china isn't that coming a bit too early uh, unfortunately for them what happened in the last 12 months this incredible turn of events where china is actually coming out much stronger out of the pandemic at least internally where internally there was this discussion about is the, you know, in April, May 2020, is the leadership really having the grip of what's going on in Wuhan and in the rest of the country? Well, it seems that China has the upper hand on this and is now pushing its card internationally. Internationally, I think the situation will be much harder. And I think we will have also a much, much more strategic uh, 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 Biden administration. And when you see the quality of the people that Biden poached in all sectors, and first and foremost, uh, the technology sector that that uh, I'm I'm the most uh, uh, interested in is, is incredible. So we will have a very very heavy weight in 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 Washington. A heavy weight in Washington, 
Uh, I remember four years ago, uh, Andre, you were on this uh, set and uh, back in the days when we weren't so socially distant. And uh, y there you we were discussing madman theory that uh, the Trump's approach to 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 China, that in the end, perhaps it would bear uh, results where where Obama d didn't. Now we've seen in the last 24 hours, like I said, these sanctions against these top level officials in Beijing and the strong words by Joe Biden against Russia's president, calling Vladimir Putin a killer. On that score, uh, Douglas Herbert, you mentioned that uh, at, the, at the outset of this conversation. Let's listen to Putin's response yeah. today. Мы действительно, как он сказал, мы с ним лично знакомы. И что бы я ему ответил? Я бы сказал ему, будьте здоровы. Я желаю ему здоровья. Говорю это без иронии, без шуток. So that, that was the friendly face of Putin's remarks. Stay Say, healthy. With, uh, stay healthy. Yeah. Sounds like a mafia. It, it, could, it, it does sound we're, like a mafia. You're, you're, you're chuckling, Let, but let's take could, it could, things, could things get well, they, out of hand with Russia and look, China? With, look, I, it, and is Biden to a degree applying kind of a madman theory as well? both with the Chinese and the Russians. Well, psychologically, you just it's really tough to mess with Putin because he will give back more than you get through at him. Uh, he'll throw back the kitchen sink and everything else at So you wouldn't like him um, saying stay healthy? No, I mean, it, there's a little bit. I mean, it's hard to not see a little bit of menace in those remarks. You wonder what's coming next. Uh, look, they did recall their ambassador uh, to Washington for consultations about where to go next with this relationship. Putin also in those remarks, I'll just mention, he also, you know, talked about all the, which he does a lot, talked about the, the divisions within America America, how America is torn asunder. Very similar to what we heard the Very Chinese. Very the Chinese exactly, The same sort of thing. America, he, he even brought up, he said, the Black Lives Matter movement. Where did that come from? Why do you think that exists? It exists because of the endemic legacy of, of racial injustice, slaw slavery, slaughtering minorities in America, Native Americans. He really laid it out. I mean, that's what we didn't hear. And in hear. this case, and, it's, it, is, it is Biden who started it. And it's it, Biden who started it, calling, it, calling Putin a killer. So the question is— He agreed is, that Putin was a killer, yes, can, but— can yeah. Biden back up his threats? Um, can Biden? Well, look, you know, Biden sort of did a Trump, you know, sort of like tune in now. We'll see what's coming. He almost did like that, you know, that reality TV show he thing with, when he said there will be he will be paying a price. Didn't say what that price is going to be. He's now in this position where he has to deliver on something. Right. He has to either, you know, step up the sanctions or or he has to do something else. I don't think it's in his interest, and he's not going to want to go too too far right now. He does need Russia on too many other issues right now. So, Andre Lezukuk Pietri, uh, I'm asking Doug these questions because obviously China's watching what's going on between the U.S. and Russia. No, no, obviously, and and if the hope was that uh, from either side, either Russia or China, that that, that there will be a one uh, one to one discussion with the U.S., I think the U.S. is just sending the message. The superpowers back, and uh, and we uh, we we will claim that uh, uh, everywhere. Where and it's also a message also to the to the allies. I mean, you know, we had four years where a lot of people, especially in Europe, asked themselves, where is the U.S.? The U.S. disengaged from probably all fronts, from the Middle East to uh, to the Pacific. Uh, now uh, it's very obvious that the new administration... But, uh, but, uh, but as, Doug as, said, as, as Doug said, though, he's now got to back it up, Joe Biden. Can he do it? Well, look, I mean, you, you still have the military might, which is uh, enormous and which is currently, uh, you know, performing more than ever these, these uh, freedom of navigation operations, these FONOPs, as, as we call them, in, in the Strait of, of, of Taiwan. Um, you have, obviously, um, he's, he's also backed up of a relatively success so far from, from the fight on the pandemic. Obviously, we are not there yet, but, you know, he achieved his target of 100 million people uh, vaccinated this is this is something where where the, the us seemed very weak and and fragile it seems that it's it's getting better the turning the corner we're going to have to leave it there cuz we uh, cuz we, we, unfortunately we're out of time but i want to thank you so much andre lozakog pietri president of the joint european disruptive initiative i want to thank as well Douglas herbert stay with us more to come more news plus the day's business and sports <laughs>